Today we're going to be custom designing a Twilight t-shirt and then color separating it for screen printing using a brand new color separation software from Freehand Graphics called Separation Studio, powered by ViewRate. Let's begin. We've just dropped these images in Photoshop from the internet. Now to prepare for color separation in Separation Studio, you need to bring to Separation Studio a finished file. So let's finish preparing in Photoshop. To make this picture a little bit more interesting, we're going to drop it into this moon right here. We'll size it and make sure it fits directly in the moon. It fits pretty good right now, but let's get rid of some of these edges. To do this, we'll use our Eclipse Marquee tool, and then we're going to feather the edges by refining the edge, putting on some feathering right there. We'll select Inverse, and then Delete. Now we'll deselect that and continue editing. Now we do have some hard edges here, so we're going to take our eraser tool and just erase those hard edges. Make that fade in there, right here, and we're good to go. So now we'll get rid of the dates down here and size it down for a t-shirt, so we'll crop it. And we have our finished image ready to separate. First of all, let's take a look at the resolution. We go to image and image size, we see that we have a 200 resolution image. It is a little low, typically we'd recommend working in 300 DPI, but 200 resolution for an image like this, especially for web graphics, these came off the internet, pretty darn good. It looks pretty crisp, it looks professional, so we'll take it over to Separation Studio. To do that, we're gonna save this as either a TIFF or save it as a JPEG. We're gonna save this one as a TIFF. What we'll do now is color separate it. For those unfamiliar with screen printing, this is a flat image. Basically, this does have a couple different layers in it right now, but basically it's a flat image. What that means is that we have to take it and actually color separate it, taking the red, the grays, the whites, the hair colors, the browns out of the image in order to actually print it. To do this in Photoshop, extremely difficult because we have to do it all by eye and all manually. However, to do it in Separation Studio, very simple. Once it saves it as a TIFF, all we need to do to open it up in Separation Studio is just open and find the TIFF. So we'll find our Eclipse image. As it opens, it automatically color separates it into nine colors. And here's our design color separated. We see these nine colors separated. We can actually come in here and look at each one of these colors. So we have our white underbase. Notice it's a very soft underbase, which is great for screen printing because you do not want that bulletproof vest on your t-shirt. We have our red, our blue, our gold, there's a little purple in here, uh, not much green. If we want to see a little, we actually view the film. It's just a tiny bit of green. You can view as ink or view as film. Turquoise, there's turquoise, there's gray, and there's our highlight white. So it breaks it down into nine colors. Well, not many people have a nine color screen printing press, so let's break it down even more. First of all, you combine light colors. To combine colors, you can go to your channels and apply a channel. First, you choose your source. So let's say we're going to take our purple we're going to target it to the red. That will take a light color and combine it together. Choose multiply, and that's actually going to combine the purple with the red. We'll delete the purple channel now. There was nothing in the green, so we can just delete that channel. I'm deleting by right-clicking the channel and then deleting it. The turquoise. Now the turquoise definitely has something in it. You can see the turquoise is the color of their shirts. Now if we delete that into blue, even though a lot of times I will combine turquoise and blue together because they're pretty similar, we're going to lose some depth in the image because that actually shows up in their t-shirts. So instead of doing that, we're going to change the color of their shirts a little bit. So we're actually going to take the turquoise and combine that into the gold channel. So first of all, let's deselect the turquoise. This is called our proof positive view, which shows all the colors. What I'm doing right now is I'm clicking the image and I'm going to show the print order. So by unselecting the turquoise, I can see what the image would look like without the turquoise. However, if I apply the channel, go to a channels, and then take my turquoise and apply it to the gold channel, once I hit OK, you can see that turquoise join the gold and the shirts will change color. Now we have a more brown, a little bit golder shirt. This is ready to screen print, but let's make a few final adjustments to see exactly what we want to do. First of all, you want to take a look at the image without certain channels on it. So take off the highlight white, see how it looks. Take off the gray, see how it looks. We can take off some of these channels, but we're losing a lot of depth with the gray. And we're losing a lot of brightness with the highlight white. We can also zoom in. You can use the same 
Zoom Tools is Photoshop, and you can zoom in to see what you're doing a little bit easier. If we want to enhance the channel, let's say we want to bring out the red, we can choose the red, we can highlight it, we can hit Adjust Channels, and we can adjust the red. Adjusting the red would not only adjust the red in their faces, but obviously the red on the edge of the eclipse. With Separation Studio, you can even come in and make minor adjustments. Let's say we want to take Edward's eyes and make them red. We can do that a few different ways. We can either manually drop by coming here and take off all the active channels, only the red showing, and then manually saturate his eyes. So first of all, we need to take our pixel width down quite a bit, down to about 15. And then we can come in here, as you can see, I'm saturating red into his eyes. I can work my low saturation levels, my high saturation levels. Now let's say we got a little bit too red, like right here. What we can also do is then come erase this. So we'll just erase that red out of there. We can also choose to desaturate it. So if you got a little bit too much saturation there, we can come in here and we can erase some of it. And now we can see that Edward has red eyes. We can do the same thing with any of these colors. We can even change the colors. So let's say we wanted to change the red to a different color. Or we wanted to change blue to a different color. We can actually come in here and change the blue. We can select custom. And we can take the blue and we can make it a darker blue or we can make it a lighter blue. Let's see what happens when we make it a lighter blue. If we hit OK, it's going to completely change the image. The lighter blue combines with the other colors and turns the image rather green. Control Z or just undo and undo what we just did. These tools allow us to select just certain parts of the design. Let's say we just want to highlight this red right here. We can simply take our marquee tool, highlight around it, missing the rest of the red in the image, or we don't want to highlight, and then close the loop. From here, we can take once again our saturation levels on the channel and then we can adjust these. But this will only affect that part of the image, this won't affect their skin tones or anything else. This is great because if you want to just make that part of the image a little bit redder, we don't have to ruin the rest of the image. We can even see the color density by taking our any one of our tools, any one of our selection tools, and looking at the color density here. So right here you see we have 100% red. Right here we see we have 47% red. So that's going to actually convert as we show the film and print that percentage of a halftone dot. Let's take a look at some comparisons. Now keep in mind this is a six color simulator process print. We're just using six colors in a screen printing press. Let's take a look at it compared to the original. There's the original digital photo. Actually looks pretty darn good. Now let's take it to print. Unfortunately, you can't print directly out of Separation Studio, but that actually kind of works to your advantage. Especially if you're doing simulated process designs and you want to incorporate text into them, you typically don't want to use text in a raster program. A raster text will pixelate the edges and put halftones in your edges of your text instead of creating a hard vector edge. So what we'd want to do is import this into a vector program like Corel Draw or Illustrator. One great thing about spot process powered by ViewRight is actually the ability to view the image the way it's going to look. As you notice, all these adjustments we've been making, we can see them live. So as we combine channels, we can make color adjustments, we can see how they're going to affect the screen print on the screen. Now that we're finished here in Separation Studio, we simply save as, and this saves that as an EPS. This EPS can be opened up in Photoshop, Illustrator, or CorelDRAW. Let's take this same EPS and open it up in Photoshop. If we take a look at the channels, all the information is still here. However, if we take a look at the full color preview, it looks nothing like what our actual image is. This is the way Photoshop reads these colors. So this EPS conversion of it actually does not look like what it's actually going to screen print like, which would look more like this, or actually separate and separation studio look like this. Let me reiterate this because if you're using any type of Photoshop plugin, you're looking at a Photoshop plugin and there are plenty out there, separation programs that claim they can color separate but they do it in Photoshop, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get colors that are really blown out, not very proportionate, and they don't look like they actually are going to look on the screen printing press. If you only have Photoshop, you can take your film positives and print them directly out of Photoshop as you see here. However, my favorite is CorelDRAW X5. 
CorelDRAW X5 is a vector program, so if you want to add text, you can add it in, in vector, and CorelDRAW X5 actually sees the color the way Spot Process Separation Studio sees it. In CorelDRAW, we open up a blank document, we place it or import it as an encapsulated postscript file. This will import directly onto the page in full color with the Pantone colors already separated out. Now we'll place it. Here's our full color image. Now to get it to read the document palette, we're going to go to print. And once it's printing, it now recognizes each one of the bases. So now we can go to save or cancel out of that. We can go back to our tools. We can look at our palette editor. And we can now see our document palette. Through a black background behind it, this is how it would look on a dark garment. Let's say we wanted to add some text. To add some text is pretty simple. First of all, we just add the text. Then we can select the color. We can select the white underbase. We can select the red. If we would like the white underbase and the red, we simply can make a copy of it and then we can paste over the red or put a overlay or a gradient overlay using the red. But we'd want to keep to continue to use these Pantone colors. So let's say we want to just use white ink and we want two passes of white. So we're going to take that, we're going to copy it, we're going to paste it, and we're going to choose the second layer as the top white. Once copied, be sure to right click the selected font, overprint, and select overprint fill. If you don't select overprint fill, Corel will only see one layer, not two. So now we have two layers here. Pastes it right on top of each other, so I'll undo that. We have one using the bottom white, one using the top white. So this will be a print flash print on this text without even having to create any different screen for it. And it will be in vector format because we're in CorelDRAW. We'll zoom in on the text and as you can see, very nice and crisp because it's in vector format. Now we have our print, we're ready to make films. Once it's in this form, we simply go to print, print our separations to our AccuRip software, choose our page preferences, choose print separations, select the colors we want to print. Now we do not want to print cyan, magenta, yellow, or black. And now we're ready to output. One last bit of information, we want to print file information, and then we want to print registration marks. File information is going to actually show us what we're going to be printing. Registration marks are going to give us center marks on the page. Once everything is selected, hit apply, send it to your printer, that'll rip, and you're ready to expose screens. Typically these types of images would all be printed through 230 mesh screens. So we're going to print these on Newman roller frames with some high tension to get really fine detail because it's a pretty good looking image, and then we're going to print them on all 230 mesh screens. As far as ink colors go, you can use specific Pantone colors, Separation Studio recommended, like 032 or certain Pantone yellows. You can also use out-of-the-box colors, so like scarlet red, golden yellow. Whatever you, whatever you use, keep in mind that that may affect your image, so you do want to test. This is typically printed uh, white underbase, flash, and then wet on wet on top of that. So you do want to let your screens build up for a few times before you go to production because those screens build up on the back and they change a little bit. That may change how your print looks. Separation Studio is available from Rionet and SilkTrainingSupplies.com. Stay tuned for more great tutorials.